we are going to record everything to my desktop. Um, I think one of the biggest things when it comes down to this is it's got to be consistent. Um, personally, I love going live. I love actually putting out the content. I just want to make sure that uh, we're good to go and this will probably be uh, reposted. So what are we going to be talking about today? What is the most important thing in today's society? <laughs> no, essentially, especially with an agent, you know, one of the most important things that it comes down to an agent is consistency. Consistency, consistency across the board, okay? And the thing is, when that happens, you have, you, you start building upon yourself. And I'm just sharing it to um, my personal page. I just wanna make sure that that goes out uh, perfectly. Share to your timeline. There you go, post. Yay. So this is the thing is when it comes down to the most successful agents, you know, listen, am I up there in the top 10%? I don't know. Whatever the top 10% is, I have no idea. Maybe the top uh, 5%, I have no idea. And really what I'm looking at is longevity in kind of like a freak term. Uh, not really in a freak term, but more in the fact that so many people are short-term thinking, okay? They're short-term thinking on where is my next deal coming from, not am I doing the right activities for a continuous streamline of deals, okay? So if you need money right now, you just, you just get a rental, okay? That's really not the name of the game. The name of the game is longevity. And longevity is, is really, it comes down to what are the activities you are doing on a consistent basis, okay? So this comes down to, obviously, not only activities, this also comes down to your willpower. And that's essentially what we're gonna be talking about today. There's a great book out there by Kelly McGonigal. I probably just butchered her name, but it's called The Willpower Instinct. And essentially is you need stress in your life. Stress is growth, stress is good. Distress is bad. Okay, so essentially the route in which you want to be successful is it, it all matters on what you do on a daily basis. And most people, they're looking for motivation, okay, all the time. They're looking for motivation to make calls, to ask for business, to ask for referrals, to send out an email, to wake up, say, ready to go and roaring to go. I rarely wake up and I'm like, I can't wait to prospect today, okay? And I'm not even hitting the phones as hard as I should. Okay, I just started today the consistency, which is going to go up right here. It's going to be a calendar. And actually, this is pretty good because I'm going to have my accountability, which is going to be right behind me. And essentially, the most successful agents in the next year, which it's already been tough. But the thing is, there's been a residual amount of success to uh, a lot of the listings, a lot of the buyers. So in other words, you know, you, you, you are able to hold off on income or really looking at maybe your financials as deep as you normally would as an agent. But in the coming 14 months, you know, up until the election next year, and then probably another two or three months afterwards, is you're really gonna say, okay, what am I doing? You're gonna start really questioning every dollar you spend, every moment that you actually are, um, doing what you should be doing or not doing what you should be doing, you know almost almost to the second that what you're doing right now is the best use of your time or not the best use of your time. And willpower is, it's all about willpower, okay? So there's a couple of things that are basic. Number one is the hardest thing that you need to get done is done in the morning. The hardest thing I'm going to do is call people that their home just came off the market. They don't know that I'm going to be calling them. It's essentially a cold call. And then I'm going to be moving into a warm call, which are people that have their home on the market and they're known as for sale by owners. The former is known as expireds. And that's the thing is, as I'm calling these people, they're not easy calls. Okay. <laughs> there's a lot of hangups and there's a lot of colorful language in the first part. But I also know that I would have no willpower to 2.42 p.m. to get on the phone and say, hey, listen, uh, are you looking to bring on an agent in this market as we go into the holidays? Obviously, again, that is all a story in my mind. 
But when we're thinking about willpower, the best use of looking at willpower is when am I actually doing the hardest activity? Okay, so if it's obviously making calls or doing a marker report or something like that, it has to be in the morning. The hardest, the number one thing that you do is prospecting for business. That's the CEO portion of your day. The COO is the easy portion. That's essentially just servicing the business that you already have. But the CEO, and that's the thing is that, say, perfect example is four or five months ago, I was getting inundated with business and I was freaking out because I was like, oh my God, it's just me, I have 10 listings, which isn't a lot, not a lot, no complaints. And that's the thing is that I, I haven't been in that arena yet. So I thought that was a lot. To other people, other people have like 50, 60, 100, 200 listings and they're like, dude, you have 10? So for me, I know that that was a, that was a whole new threshold. That was, that was the stress I needed and by the way, the stress as in you stress your muscle to make it larger, you stress your brain to get smarter, I stressed my business to get bigger, and it wouldn't be a bigger deal, or it wouldn't be that much of a change in the future for me to get 10, as long as I know that I survived and I was able to handle it and I sold them or at least serviced it to the best of my ability, okay? So stress is good, okay? I'm not talking about continuous stress throughout the day, day over day, week over week, month over month. That's bad. That's unhealthy. You'll notice immediately when you start losing sleep. Okay, you'll notice immediately when you're waking up in a cold sweat that the stress that you have right now is not good stress. Okay, I'm talking about the beautiful stress of walking into a fear of public speaking, asking for the sale, boldly throwing, into, throwing out a number for your buyer on a listing and being able to justify it confidently. That is the stress that is good, but we don't want to lean into that. You know, we, we, essentially we're afraid of it. You know, me included, I included, whatever the proper English is there. And that's the thing is that it really boils down to the most successful. There's a couple of catchphrases that I'm going to throw out right now. Number one is the most successful people, which is the title of this video, in this coming market, in the next 14 months, when we enter the holiday season, and then we come out, and it's an election year, and people are questioning, should I buy, should I sell, what's the price, should I move forward, with the interest rates, what about the election, all these things that are going through their mind, and then you have the media that's pounding this into the public as well. As an agent, how are you gonna be able to weather the storm? I went through 09, I know what it's like. It was a scratching at the chalkboard. For me though, the way that I looked at it is, banks were not lending at that time, yet there were buyers. The difference now is that there really aren't that many qualified serious buyers, but the banks are willing to lend. Okay, that's the only difference. So at that time, it was really just convincing someone that it's a good option, the one that they saw and they want to move forward on, that they should move forward on it. Now, in the next 14 months, it's really convincing a buyer it's even the right time to buy, <laughs> which is crazy because we're going to look back at 2020 and say, I wish I bought. It is so reminiscent. And if you actually look at the data and you look at the graphs, you'll notice that this is very 2009. And as a buyer's agent, you have to be saying that. You have to break out the graphs. I don't have it on me. But you have to be breaking out the graphs that essentially say, hey, listen, I understand that the media is telling you not to buy. It's a terrible time and it's an election year. But that's also the best time to buy. And then you historically go into 1993. 1999 to 2000, 2009 to 2010, 2019 to 2020. Those are all years through history that you had a two year stagnation or at least decrease in pricing to a six and a half to seven and a half year run. If you're willing to hold on to a property for seven years, you will make a ton of money. There are properties, what was the statistic? I'm gonna be doing the, the market update. The market update is seven out of the last eight quarters in New York City has been going down in value. Seven out of the last eight quarters, 
pricing has gone down. 20% of all homes that have sold since 2015 have sold at a loss. That's crazy. That's also a buying time. Real estate, it's, it's all emotions. I'm listening to the, the book by Ray Dalio. Ray Dalio owns Bridgewater Associates, which is one of the most, if not the most successful hedge fund in the world. Grew up on Long Island, and uh, he lives in Connecticut and, and, you know, whatever. Not a big deal. But essentially, in the book, he goes, I made so many mistakes that were repeated already in history before me. So what I did was I went and researched history. That's what he's saying. He's like, I just looked at every single market recorrection in the present time with the most amount of data and said, okay, this is very reminiscent of the 1930s or the 1920s or the 1940s or something like that. And he connects the dots and he says, this is, I need to sell. The debt load is too large. I need to buy. 2017 was the year to actually sell. Okay. So if you're, you're a, uh, an agent in this coming year, you have to do two things immediately. Number one is look at all of your expenses. Okay. Because there's going to be a lot more sweat, sweat equity. And the reason there's going to be a lot more sweat equity is because you're not running between as many appointments showing the properties that you have. A, because there's probably less that you have on the market. And number two is there's less people talking about it. So it really is going to be coming down to your sweat equity. So that's the expenses. And number two is the consistency in which you're doing it. Okay. I'm saying this from someone as a student. Okay. As I'm implementing it. Okay. I'm coming in from, from a, um, more of a, someone that knows that once you start building the foundation, it will feel weird if you don't do something, which is building up your database, reaching out and asking for business, whether that's for sale by owners, past clients, referrals. Um, personally for me, I think one of the biggest ways that we're really going to ramp up in 2020 is, uh, is the clients that have already know, like, and trust us. We have an abysmal marketing campaign around that. I am the first one to admit that. I, we have an abysmal past client reach out program. And it's, it's, uh, it's definitely embarrassing to say, being that I'm coming up on 11 years in real estate, okay? I used to tell people when they would say, how long you been in real estate? I used to say long enough. <laughs> now I can actually put a number because they're like, oh, okay, 11 years, that's, that's long enough. And honestly, at this point, I'm still learning my, the, the ideal schedule. Even right now, I'm pushing things further and further and further and further and further back on my calendar because it does not make me money, okay? That's it. In this time, as any entrepreneur or any business owner, especially in this industry, because this is what we're, we're going for, this is for the agents, this podcast, is that you have to be looking at every single moment. You are essentially voting for your where you put your time is essentially voting for your attention. You, where you put your attention is voting for your time spent. That's the best way to put it. Where you put your attention. So if your attention is on a book, on social media, on email, you're putting your attention there, that's essentially time. So really at any time of the day, the one question that you should be asking is, is this the best use of my time? Because Time is really the only thing, like I said, is going to be more, there's going to be more time for agents, okay? Um, I'm just going to, I'm going to leave it there, but I did write some other things down, and I'm, I'm essentially just going to read this out, and it really has to do with, as the, as the, as times get harder, I don't, I don't want to say it like that, but essentially as times get harder, in other words, commissions are clearly going down the amount of transactions are clearly going down there's more competition personally i don't feel it at all i love it we're growing this is my best year by far probably by 10 percent probably even more 10 percent and i wrote here as times change and they get harder um it will we, it is not about doing the easier things. 
It is about doing the things that are harder. And that means following up seven or eight times instead of three times. That means emailing 15, 20 people instead of 10. That means doing things times two or three because that's what it's gonna take, okay? I'm changing over my CRM to Salesforce. The girl that met with me has literally called me once or twice a day, every single day for my business. That's how you get business. That is exactly how you get someone to sign up on your website. That is exactly how you, I have text messaged. I finally got a time at 3.30 to talk to this buyer of this place, 230 Central Park South. It is a steal if you actually put in an offer. It's a $3 million million property. It's currently listed at 2.2 million. That's the listing price. You could definitely get a better deal because we're either gonna rent it out or they're gonna stay there. And if you bought this in two years, this thing would be going up in value immediately for seven or eight years. It's located on Central Park and it has all views of Central Park. It's a sick place. One guy that came to the open house, came back to an open house. I was in Louisville doing a triathlon and he came back and I've been calling and emailing him every single day, practically every single day for three weeks to grab a call. And then I noticed I might be bothering this guy, but I continued. And then in one of the emails, I literally wrote, I literally wrote in one of the emails, I wrote, uh, I don't know if I'm bothering you right now, but um, I was just wondering if you were actually interested in purchasing this property. And he said, no, I've just been really busy. Perfect example. So now we have a call today. But it took probably 20 correspondents on one person that came to the open house. 20 correspondents to get one person at an open house to just get one phone call. And that's it. And I'm not, I'm not sitting here as someone that's like, oh, look at me, look at... I'm, I'm sitting here saying it's taking a lot longer to convert the lead. It is taking a lot more touches to convert a lead. It is getting a lot. Um, you have to be more intelligent with more data instead of just saying, go with your emotion. The market is good. You've seen pricing go up since we've started to look Buy now. That's not working as a buyer who's intelligent. Like one of my buyers who I just introduced to a banker, I think they had a conversation today and we're going to start looking. He came to me and he said, hey, listen, um, actually, no, he was referred to me. I'm sorry. He was referred to me. And on the first call, he said, listen, and then he just rattled off all these market statistics. Okay. He's smart. He's good. He understands that he's voting with his money, not through emotion, but through The market is at this place that's reminiscent to 2009. I understand interest rates are low. I'm at the point in the life that I'm going to be there for at least seven or eight years. So he's thinking longevity. That's exactly how an agent should be thinking. An agent should be thinking, and this is an agent-centered podcast, the one that I'm doing today. And on most days that I'm going to be doing something like this. As an agent, long-term thinking has to be priority, okay? I was out to dinner last night and one of the guys I was out to dinner with, he goes, he's very short-term thinking. He's very like, what is good right now? (laughs) It's like, you know, let's do this. Let's do it to the extreme. And I am so long-term thinking, it's sickening. It's probably a disease that I have, that I'm always just thinking, how is this gonna be, how is this gonna play out in 30 years? Not what is my feelings in two minutes, okay? So as an agent, that's pretty much it. Do the hard thing, as Les Brown said, do the hard things so your life is easy, all right? Instead of the easy things or else your life will be hard because it'll be harder to do the, and it's, I'll leave you with this as well, is that we, we are gonna be going live every single week, probably, hopefully. We will be going live every single week. This is the Agent Podcast. We'll also have other podcasts, obviously for buyers and consumer specific. This is the last thing I'll leave you with is that build the foundation as an agent. Build your foundation as an agent right now. And the reason being is if you build your foundation as an agent right now, when the market turns in spring 2021, that means the market is already three years slow and or declining, okay? The election is over. There is 
people in totally different life circumstances. They just got married. They are having a baby. They're moving out to the suburbs. They want to go to LA, <laughs> which everyone wants to go, I guess. But that's the thing is that in th three years is a long, long time for a lot of people. 27 to 30, 30 to 30. 33, 33 to 36. A lot of things happen in those time periods and it's gonna be a totally set of new buyers that have pent up money that they've been spending towards rent and rent has reached a point. It has been compounding ridiculously over the last years. It is very strong, the rental market. You have a no fee apartment and it's at market rent. It's, you're gonna get 15, 20 inquiries immediately. That's a fact. And there's rent is going to reach a point where people are going to say, why am I throwing $7,000 out of the window? Why am I putting 5K into this one bedroom when I could be buying for the exact same price or maybe a little bit more as long as I have the down payment and the income and the credit, I'm ready to go. So hope this helps. If you are an agent and you have any questions, leave in the comments below. Uh, we're going to be going live and obviously YouTube is going to be getting the residual video. I can't do live on Facebook and uh, YouTube because they don't like each other and they say no. Actually, Facebook is the only one. YouTube doesn't care where you go live. You can go live on YouTube and Twitch and, and Hitch and all those other silliness and YouTube, or I'm sorry, Instagram, <laughs> everything. But have an amazing day. If you guys have any questions, I'm going to be uh, talking about a great, there, there's a couple of topics, you know, I don't know if uh, this will come on to, but I have my computer screen right here and I have a lot of topics that I want to be covering this year. And the reason I'm doing this is because there's no other agent in New York City that is doing exactly what you need to do to grow your business. And again, I am not the one, I am not the one percent or what I have no idea what percentage I am in New York City agents agents but I could tell you right now that there's no one that has read as many books and is is primed to explode onto the marketplace than I am I am I am ready I'm excited just be consistent Charles put out the good videos call everyone that you need to call every single day and you're going to have an amazing 2020 have an amazing day I'll talk to you guys right around uh, Thanksgiving and of course, you could always uh, email me, charles at botenston.com. Um, I'm essentially going to be uh, handing that over hopefully in the next year because email and text, it gets overwhelming after a while. But have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon.